clean drinking water supply remains a challenge in rural areas given the nature of polluted river waters in India and the large population that is dependent on these rivers. In India, about 21% of communicable diseases are water related and polluted water kills over 1,600 people every day. India's ability to sustain its rapidly expanding economy therefore depends heavily on improving its drinking water quality and infrastructure. Major water suppliers, however, are inefficient or do not serve all areas, while private wells often fail prematurely. Hence, local communities need to have affordable alternatives to sustain themselves with clean drinking water at predictable quantities, qualities and cost. The Energy and Resources Institute, Terry, Western Regional Centre, Goa in association with University of Rhode Island, USA, has initiated a step towards providing an option to tackle water woes. A major project supported by the World Bank under Development Marketplace 2007, Terry implemented river bank filtration systems in Kariampali village near Dandeli, which is a part of Uttara Kannada district in Karnataka. This project addresses the need for safe and affordable access to a reliable supply of drinking water. The study area is located in a tropical climate along the Kali River. Plentiful rainfall, together with several dams, guarantees flow in the river all year round. However, environmental pollution and failing infrastructure have degraded access to water in the Kali River Basin. The study area covers 10 villages downstream from Dandeli City, which is a major industrial centre in this part of Karnataka. People living along this stretch of the Kali River are affected by polluted water. The principal sources of pollution include industrial effluents and untreated domestic wastes and sewage. The effluents are being released into the river, causing water pollution throughout the year. River pollution has resulted in major public health problems, with waterborne diseases from fecal contamination affecting an estimated 300,000 people in the Kali River Basin. Although of secondary importance, the lack of reliable access to clean water and widespread water shortages due to failed water infrastructure pose additional burdens on the local population. While these are substantial problems, there are simple and cost-effective solutions to address the water pollution and supply problems in this and other similar areas. One such method is known as river bank filtration. This project's key objective was to demonstrate the suitability of RBF technology in a rural tropical setting and show that RBF can provide villagers with safe, affordable and reliable drinking water. In addition, a participatory community-driven approach was adopted to introduce RBF as a self-sustaining business opportunity for local entrepreneurs. What is River Bank Filtration Technology or RBF? RBF operates by extracting water from wells located near rivers about 20 to 200 meters away. If engineered correctly, most of the extracted RBF water originates from the river. As this river water infiltrates into and then passes through the riverbed sediments, contaminants are removed by overlapping biological, physical and chemical processes. RBF is more reliable and user-friendly than other treatment systems because it does not rely on chemicals and is mechanically simple. It can be inexpensively designed, installed 
and maintained, which is attractive to the potential investors and operators of RBF systems. Further, RBF is robustly scalable, which means that systems can be built to meet the needs of individual households, farms or even large cities. The performance of an RBF system is dependent on local conditions such as permeability of the riverbank sediments, river level and sediment transport variability and the type and load of contamination. Much of the information required for installing an RBF system can be extrapolated over some area along a river. Hence, information sharing is one way to lower the cost of individual RBF systems. In the project, modern spatial data referencing methods based on Google Earth were employed which permitted us to share our information with other potential RBF users. The RBF project in the Kali River Basin was developed and implemented in three phases to achieve best results and showcase the RBF capabilities. Phase 1 – Reconnaissance Study Phase 2 – RBF Installation and Testing Phase 3 – Business Building, Outreach and Information Transfer during the reconnaissance phase, a field study was carried out to better understand the watershed in terms of water quality and availability. Working with local government and academic partners, we gathered information about the river's hydrogeology, flow and flood records, and water quality over time and space. In addition, several sites along the river were screened for their suitability as RBF demonstration sites. Besides this, household survey was conducted to establish a baseline to which to compare the effect of RBF water on the health and well-being of local communities. The survey was conducted in association with students from a local college. It was based on questionnaires translated into the local language. A number of questions were put together to identify current sources of water, dependency on river water, health issues, existing water quality and understanding the priority for the people while reliability of concern for agriculture and other domestic use and people's willingness to pay for an improved water quality through RBF water supply. A total of 130 questionnaires were filled out, representing about 30% of all households in the study area. The survey indicated that 95% people use and depend on the Kali River water for their domestic and agriculture use. Among the surveyed households, 16% indicated that they get diarrhea after consuming the river water, especially right around the beginning of the monsoon rains. About 37% of all households acknowledged a relation between water quality and their health. On the part of willingness to pay and participate for clean, reliable water, 90% of households said they would pay for good quality of water supply and also showed interest to participate in educational programs aimed at understanding water quality issues, hygiene, sanitation and getting guidance on health management. Then I worked with Terry for more than 6-7 uh, months and I got a wonderful and tremendous experience in water quality. Because the surrounding peoples are having the lots of problems uh, because of the drinking water, day by day they are losing their health. Then these Terry peoples approached this area and they have tried a lot to improve their health, to improve the water quality and to improve the thoughts that water 
cannot be purified without a minimum amount. Overall, the reconnaissance survey provided the technical information required to select an appropriate RBF site as well as the information needed to understand the socio-economic conditions in the test area and the need for improved water quality, access and supply. And we look at downstream area, there are around more than 10 villages, say around more than 5,000 people who are already consuming the bad quality of water. Yes, we do had, uh, we did come across some certain difficulties in terms of identifying site, in terms of looking at local people, in terms of taking local support. But uh, in, in those situations, we try to work out with the local people, make them understand why, uh, why this technology is important and why we are doing this, how this technology can help, help them. During Phase 2, the technical information acquired from Phase 1 was synthesized and one of the potential sites was identified and selected as the RBF demonstration site. This site is located approximately 4 kilometers downstream from Dandeli near the village of Kariampali. The main criteria for selecting this site were 1 availability of land next to the river and cooperation of the land owner. 2. Need for safe water for drinking and agriculture. 3. Adequate hydrogeology. 4. Degrees of contamination and accessibility to the Kali River. And 5. Closeness of the village to the river. The RBF well field was designed based on our understanding of the local hydrogeology, particularly the thickness of the riverbed sediments. That's what how we identified this area is the most uh, suitable for our experimentation. Although only one RBF well would be drilled under typical conditions, for this demonstration project, however, four RBF wells were installed. Yeah, normally we only need one well, but uh, we were interested in studying data that allows us to estimate how good the treatment is. The reason for these extra wells was to show how the water quality improves with distance from the river, a task that was never before addressed for RBF systems in monsoon climates. These four wells were drilled at approximate 20 meter intervals and within 100 meters from the river. So this is 40 meters. Okay. So here it is better now. Yes, it's already better. This is this is this is again another at at seventy feet. Um, all wells, all four wells we have drilled for this project were completed identically, um, about 75 feet deep, um, screened through the alluvium and uh, water was encountered or is being encountered at this time at about 5.5 meter below surface. The well yield however varies from well to well in well number one and number two it is somewhat less than the well number three, which is our main production well, and net number four, which is our uh, fallback well, which could be used for as an alternative in case number three fails, which we don't expect. The RBF wells were then regularly monitored for their hydrological behavior, such as changes in depth to water, and tested for water quality and yield. These tests were performed to demonstrate a connection between the wells and river and to describe the subsurface water movement. As a result of these tests, and as expected, the two wells closest to the river delivered water of lower quality compared to those farther away. The two wells farther away were selected for further monitoring.